2003, I was looking at the X-ray images of the galaxy and discovered a gigantic wind above and below the galactic plane. It looks like two wine glasses bursting out of the center of the galaxy. Seven years later, the NASA Fermi satellite discovered these same gigantic bubbles coming off the center of the galaxy, and they discovered them in gamma rays. Now, gamma rays require a lot more power than the X-rays I discovered, so they discovered that whatever was causing this explosion was even more powerful, and then, for me, that meant it surely means that the black hole was powering these bubbles. We think it was a giant gas cloud. There's a lot of material in gas clouds, and they don't stay in orbit. They can actually get uh, fall on the disk and then power the black hole explosion. So it just so happens that there is a gas, a stream of gas that goes right around the galaxy. It was discovered here at Mount Stromlo Observatory by two Australian astronomers in the 1970s, looking at radio wavelengths, and it's called the Magellanic Stream. It's the stream of gas that trails behind the large and the small Magellanic Cloud. So we've been studying that stream for quite a long time, and we noticed that the stream has been heated up along its length, and it's been heated up right above and below the galactic center. So that, the proof already was that these bubbles exist above and below the plane, but it wasn't clear how old they were. Were they a billion years old? Were they a hundred million years old or a few million years old? So my job was to find a way of aging the explosion from the center of the galaxy. And then to our amazement, we discovered with the Hubble Space Telescope, looking at uh, sources behind the stream, we look at distant quasars, 70 quasars at ultraviolet wavelengths, and we were able to discover these lines, these spectral features that indicate the gas is very, very hot, extremely hot. So what we did was basically date the, uh, these, these spectral features along the stream and came up with an age of somewhere between two and a half and three and a half million years old. So it's an amazing thought that when cave people walked the earth, you know, two and a half, three and a half million years ago, if they'd been looking off in the direction of, in the southern hemisphere of the galactic center, they would have seen some kind of giant ball of he he heated gas. Our galaxy grew rapidly very early on from little dwarf galaxies with their little black holes falling together. That's, what, that's the, the prevailing paradigm. Um, and it turns out, as far as we can tell, every single galaxy, small or big, has a central black hole. Even though they're very, in, in, in dwarf galaxies, it's just very hard to detect. So it's very likely that the large Magellanic Cloud has an intermediate blast, mass black hole. 50% to 70% chance. Where is the activity coming from? It's only those black holes where a cloud has fallen in. You know, you thought it fell in recently, or a star fell in recently, and it went bang. And in fact, um, only maybe a few percent of all galaxies uh, are active right now. Uh, it's because it doesn't happen very often. But what we can look for are signatures of past events. We should be looking for, I think, Astro 3D is well equipped to look for, for these sorts of signatures. There are loads of amazingly futuristic projects that are happening right now. Uh, one is called the Event Horizon project. The radio telescopes of the world combined to look at very small details in and around the galactic center. So the Event Horizon Telescope team are close to announcing what the shadow of the black hole looks like. Antarctica has an incredible telescope called Ice Cube. They've, put, they've drilled holes below the South Pole and they've put these uh, light detectors down, I think 3,000 light detectors. And they are detecting particles which are enormously energetic, vastly more powerful than has been seen before from the cosmos. Somehow the black hole is creating enormously powerful energetic particles and they're flying through space and they have to interact with the ice of the South Pole before they generate uh, cones of light and the cones of light tell us how powerful the particle is. I think the central black hole of our galaxy is the proof, is a future proof of astrophysics. There are fields like searching for planets around stars, looking for life signatures around stars. That will go on for hundreds of years. I can guarantee you that studies of the galactic center, which by the way goes right over Sydney every night, every day, 
um, will be a major part of the future of astrophysics. So I think, I can't even imagine what they'll be discovering a hundred years from now.